Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for bearing with us. Uh, technical difficulties, but not with the streaming setup. We're going to get started here in just a second. Thanks for hanging out. Boom, I'm just going to jump into it. Thank you for joining tonight. <laughs> hey, you know what ham radio is about? Experimentation. And uh, we're experimenting with stuff that's not working. So, yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream tonight, guys. Appreciate y'all being here tonight. We're going to talk about WinLink. If if we can, uh, if you're not working, Frank. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to take... I'm going to take Frank out of my ear for a second. So thank you for joining tonight. We're going to talk about Pat WinLink, which is a version of WinLink on the Raspberry Pi in the build a Pi script that came for ACK Jason runs. And apparently my Pi is a little bit foobarred. I've got this uh, Pi 4 board here that I've used for other stuff, and I just took it out, put a fresh card in it yesterday, put a brand new image on it, ran the script, installed what I needed to, and it's running incredibly slow. He's like, are you sure this isn't a Pi 2? I'm like, no, this is, this is a Pi 4, but there's, I don't know, something wrong with it. So I guess, I don't know. I don't know. So we're, we're going to, but we're going to get through it. So Jason's got uh, his Pi and he's going to show it to us and we're going to, we're going to go through all that. So I'm going to have to go back and watch my own video to set up my own station so that I can actually have it working on my side and then take it out to the field and do some POTA with it. So that's the, uh, that's the intent anyway. So special shout out and thank you to all the folks in the chat tonight who are in green text. You guys are my YouTube channel members, and uh, and I appreciate uh, you guys joining uh, and uh, supporting the channel as you do. If you have not signed up yet, go to uh, hr2.li forward slash all the GMRS, and I will put that link in the chat below. Uh, Frank's in the Frank's in the chat right now, but I sometimes you can't count on Frank to do his job. So I'm just going to put this in the chat right now. And uh, that's the link to sign up for the giveaway that will happen a week from tonight. Uh, giving away four or five different... Um, I beat you, Frank. I beat you, Frank. Yeah, you put it in there twice, but I still beat you. Uh, <laughs> that's the link to sign up for the GMRS radios. We'll be giving away a week from tonight. Next weekend, I am going to invite Mark from the Huntsville, the chairman of the Huntsville Hand Fest. He's going to come on to the show. We're going to talk about the Huntsville Hand Fest. And I'm going to give away some GMR radios for our monthly giveaway on that. Speaking of the Huntsville Ham Fest, we are planning, we have already planned, we've already started making plans for get-togethers and after-hours stuff to do at the Huntsville Ham Fest. Unbeknownst, to, I, I had forgotten that the Ham Fest itself is only Saturday and Sunday. I keep wanting to think it's Friday because Hamvention and Hamcation are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but Huntsville is only Saturday and Sunday. Well, Frank and Mike and I are driving out from Texas on Wednesday. We'll be there probably sometime late Wednesday night. Thursday, we don't really have any plans at this point in time, so we're, we're, we haven't nailed everything down yet. But what we have done is we are going to go, we're going to be camping at Montesano State Park this year, just the same way we did last year. We have a pavilion rented all day long on Friday. Someone rented it for us. And we are going to hang out at that pavilion all day long on Friday and set up, uh, probably set up the Buddy Hex, set up a couple of radios, and we are going to parks on the air the heck out of that place. So anybody that wants to come out and hang with us for all day, for an hour, whatever you want to do, come up to Montesano State Park on Friday before the Ham Fest, and we're going to hang out there and we're going to do parks on the air all day. So if you've never done parks on the air, if you've never, if you're coming in from out of town, you've never activated that park. If you want to see the hex beam, if you want to see the FTDX10 or whatever like that, you are welcome to come and sit down at the radio and activate parks on the air. I've done this two or three times here locally, uh, just setting up at different parks. I've done it down in Galveston a couple times, up here at Ray Roberts a couple times, and invited people out to come out and get on get on the air. It's a really fun time to do that. So with all the hams coming into the area for the Huntsville Ham Fest, ham fest I, I, I thought it would be a really good time to do that. And, uh, and I was going to do it on Thursday because, like I said, the Friday... I thought the show started on Friday, but it doesn't. So we're going to do that all day Friday. Got a pavilion rented. It's going to be a really fun time. So make plans for that. More to come on on uh, after hours plans. What we're going to do Thursday, Friday, uh, 
Saturday night, whatever, after the show. We don't have all that nailed down yet. We still, still got a whole month of planning, but we will definitely be doing POTA on Friday. So let's pull in everyone over here. And where are you guys at? Let's see. Jason, you're share you want to unshare your screen for just a second? So there we go. And I'm going to actually, let me, nope, that's not right. Okay, that's fine. So let's go over here. Okay, I got you guys unmuted. What's up, y'all? Hey, good evening. How are you, sir? I'm fine, man. How are you? Good. The one thing <laughs> you didn't mention was the uh, network issue that I'm having over here. So I apologize if there's any dropouts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're um, yeah, yeah. It's some some a little bit a little bit of slow connection via Zoom, so that might be a thing. But um, but Mike that's okay. was having issues uh with his internet connection. Mike Very Mike's nice internet, thing. yeah. Mike's internet sucks though. We all know that. So <laughs> um, I mean, Mike will be the first one to. I'm not poking fun at Mike for once in my life, but yeah, he, he'll be the first one to tell you that that sudden link is terrible. So <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, it's it's all good. We're we'll get through it. So. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about Pat Winlink tonight. Also, I'm just going to say, I beat you to it. There's the giveaway link, and then there's your Oh, you post. had to you had to prove it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I am well. doing my job. Okay, all right. I will I will double your pay starting tomorrow. How's that? Thank you, sir. Okay, all right. You're, you're welcome. You're oh, welcome. also, so. I'm having the one issue I'm having tonight is I got clear ice finally for my whiskey. <laughs> It won't fit in the glass. <laughs> I've been messing with it all night during when Mike was posted oh my God. Or, or full screen. And I finally was able to get an ice cube out. And I was like, yay! And I put it oh in my glass. Oh, my I'm gosh. Like, no! Uh, <laughs> you need a, a bigger different... glass. You need a bigger glass. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to pour more whiskey into your glass. What, what, a, what a shame. So, Roy uh, Dudzik. Dude, I hope you're, I'm saying your name right, but I'm probably not. Uh, congratulations, passes Amateur Extra this afternoon. Congrats, yes. Awesome. Nice. Great. Congratulations. That is gr that is great. So yes, uh, very good. So okay, so let's uh, let's jump into this. Sorry about the late start once again. It was because of Raspberry Pi issues on my side, and um, apparently I'm I don't know what's going on because that Pi is not that old, and I can't get a lock on my freaking uh, 705 either. I've got my 705 plugged up here. We were gonna plug up to it, GPS lock it, and show you all the cool features, but. For whatever reason, the 705 sitting in the shack right now won't connect to you, the GPS. You so. were just bragging earlier today that you had all this set up and beating your chest. You're like, yeah, I said I, I had, this. I said I had the Pi set up and I did, but then yeah. when Jason connected to it, it was running really slow, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think it should be running that. It didn't run slow until I put the script on it. Now I don't mean anything by that. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I mean, I did have it running. I mean, I I set it up yesterday, put the script on it last night, and I left it running all day. But that shouldn't make any difference. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I'll, I'll probably pull the um pull the card out as the micro SD card out and put it in. I found another. This is a brand new Raspberry Pi four box I've never even opened. So I'll probably put nice. it in here and try it again after we've done the stream and everything. Because I do want to get this set up for myself so I can take it out to the field and use it on Poda. Uh, and just, you know, out in the field stuff. So, so good. Hey, Jason, what I would do, yeah. I really think that's a VNC issue. What I would do is try to hook up a monitor, uh, okay. keyboard and mouse direct to the Pi without VNC and check it there and see if it's slow. If it still is, yeah, you might want to change the Raspberry Pi. If it's I not, that. I think there's a VNC issue and I can help you troubleshoot that. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. Good. Good. We'll, uh, well, we'll, when we're, we'll, when we're not uh, on a deadline for a lot. We're not on a deadline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't totally. work well under pressure. No, no, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. All right. Good. So you got a screen to share with us, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's put that in there. And there we go. Good. Now I can probably, no, oh, let's kill that. All right, so you go ahead. You go ahead, man. And let me know what you need on my side, if anything at all, and um, and we'll just kind of. Uh, I don't there. Know. think I need anything on this okay. side again. This is being a little slow over my network connection, uh, but basically, what we've got on uh, Linux on the Raspberry Pi is an application called Pat Winlink. Uh, mm -hmm. So everybody that runs it on Windows is familiar with Winlink Express. Uh, this is just a different client for Winlink that will run. Uh, well, this is actually cross-platform, so you can run Pat on a Mac, you can run it on Linux, you can run it on the Pi, or you can run it on Windows. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, on Linux, one of the drawbacks, um, Linux gives you a lot more capability, but it also uh, involves a lot more options. So it can get a lot more complicated. Uh, and early on, uh, when I started my channel, I, I saw guys struggling with, uh, with, with getting everything running in the right sequence. And that was kind of where Pat Menu was born. Initially, it was just a way to help you get uh, a modem started uh, and everything that went along with that in the right order. Uh, these are things that uh, have been built into WinLink Express all along, but on, uh, on Linux, it, it was always left as different pieces to give you um, more capable, uh, more possible ways of going about it. So. Um, mm -hmm. If I needed something a bit more complicated or a bit simpler, I could go either route and, and get it. But it's a bit confusing when you're just getting started with Linux. So what I did was I wrote Pat Menu to where we just got these buttons where we can literally start and stop a button um, or, or start and stop a modem with the click of a button. Mm -hmm. So if I click on start, stop modems, uh, you've got the RDOP modem, you've got a packet modem. Uh, recently, I believe either version 2.8 might have been 2.7 actually put uh, scripts in here for the MobiLink TNC. So even if your MobiLink is not paired to your Raspberry Pi, this will look at that, see it's not paired, and go through the whole process for you without you having to do anything uh, from the command line. <clears throat> so uh, I, have a, the I have a MobiLink uh, unit, but it's a several versions older will it will it work with with the older versions too or do you think or no it will work with a tnc2 or a tnc3 i think mine is a tnc2 but i will have to go back and confirm that okay all right good yeah. so that would work with either one of them and then just recently um i think it was march of this year mm -hmm. uh somebody got vara running on the raspberry pi uh Very that's nice. not part of build a pi yet uh, but that will be coming probably before the end of the year. Uh, but I did go ahead. If you do choose to manually install VARA, uh, you've got the buttons here that will work to start either the HF or VARA FM. Okay. Uh, so that's just kind of, that was the original intent of Pat Menu. And then as time has gone by, we've added all kinds of uh, cool things to it. Uh, one of the things we've got is Pat Auto Connect. So if you're having a, an issue getting connected to a WinLink gateway, uh, you might try seven or eight, 10 different ones and not be able to get a connection. Well, Pat Auto Connect, uh, let's go ahead and I think I can just click into this. You tell it what bands you wanna work. You set a minimum distance and a maximum distance. So in this case, it's not gonna look at anything closer than 50 kilometers to you and out to 500 kilometers. You, mm -hmm. you click start the connection and it will start walking through the list of gateways in that, uh, that meets that search criteria. Okay. And if it makes a connection, it'll automatically stop and won't try any more, any more stations. Oh, okay. So it just picks the best one. Well, it'll just start down through the list until it makes a connection. Until it makes a connection. So okay. Correct. Okay. All right. So now, now this only this only uses the RDOP modem. It does not use the VARA modem yet. Okay. 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 All right, good. So um so you have to be I assuming that you have to be connected to a if it's looking at a distance from your location, you're connected to something that's got GPS running, like the seven oh five. Yes, you do okay. need you do need a GPS dongle. Um, I mean, you can pick those up for eight bucks off of Amazon. A little yeah. USB GPS device. Uh, you mm -hmm. can get them as cheap as eight, maybe ten bucks, uh, and anything in between, all the way up to the seven hundred five. Okay. It's an ex it's an expensive GPS. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you're just buying <laughs> seven hundred five for GPS, it is expensive. <laughs> That's true. It's a good point. <laughs> All right. But it's it's one of those nice things about the radios. I mean, that, that single USB right. connection and you got the GPS that uh, we're pulling data in. Uh, right now, since we connected to my 705, here's all of the data pulling in direct from the 705 right now. So. Good. Okay. Perfect. 
So again, another one of those features, and I don't think anything, I haven't played with Windlink Express in a long while, um, mm -hmm. but I don't auto connect built into Windlink Express. Oh, and by the way, Frank, if you see questions in the chat, uh, I'm, I can't view the chat right now, so just stop me and we'll. We will do that. I um, Normally I just take questions down and I try to weave them into the conversation as needed, or I just hold uh, several of them to the end. And we'll just do a giant Q and A. That's fine either way. Yep. Yep. Okay. And plus um, uh, Joe said C plus plus for the win. And I agree. Hmm. <laughs> I have to start kicking people out of the chat here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually accidentally started a connection here and didn't mean to. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's trying to get that stopped. Uh, some of the other cool things, though, that you can do with WinLink that a lot of people are not familiar with is what's called catalog request. Mm -hmm. uh, and this came direct from uh, WinLink Express, some of the things when I first started working on this. But if you're in the field uh, and you're working over RF, um, there's a lot of different things that you can, uh, that you can request or that you can do. Uh, two of the things I probably hear out of this, weather reports and position reports. Uh, so if I click on a weather report here, there's a couple of different options, GPS weather, city weather, and grid files. Um, I don't know enough about how to read grid files, so I'm not going to embarrass myself by choosing that one. Uh -huh. Um, but if we choose GPS weather and we say, okay, it uh, should come back here in a second and tell us that message has been posted to the outbox. So okay. if I go over to my outbox, you'll see that message sitting here ready to be sent out. Okay. Now, instead of trying to use RF because we could seriously bore some viewers, let's use the telnet and we'll just go ahead and send that out. And what I should have done is probably checked my, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got several messages coming in from WinLink. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll let that marinate since we've sent that request out. Uh, you give it usually about three minutes, sometimes five minutes, and then you make another connection, and that weather request will actually come uh, right back into your inbox. So it's handy if you're out somewhere and you don't have a cell connection and you want to see what the weather is going to be. Um, and I just lost a, all right, there we go, I think. <laughs> it's paging, Jittery. Uh, DNC's paging a little bit. Yeah, we're back to the desktop now. Okay. <clears throat> um... Okay, so that was weather reports. So we'll let that mm -hmm. uh, marinate. Something else is that a lot of people aren't familiar with, and this was the challenge that I put out for field day, and that was to do a position report. Uh, so that's something else uh, that Pat Menu gives you, mm -hmm. is you can click on this, and you can either post your position report, or you can uh, request nearby stations, or you can request a single uh, station that you want to find out information about if they've recently posted. And let's see, I'm going to try this and hopefully I don't kill the internet further. <laughs> okay, so what I did was I pulled, I went to APRS.FI and I pulled my recent um, position report. One of the cool things about it, if you notice right here in green, uh, the green lettering where it says batteries at 60%, but I'm checking one link daily. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting way to be able to get information out to the rest of the world. Again, if you're in an area uh, where you don't have that cell phone connection or you don't have uh, internet, you can actually, my family knows about this website. They have links to it. Mm -hmm. um the the first word there green is a color code for us just meaning everything is okay mm -hmm. um so it's green yellow or red um but then i can give some information here uh so that they know you know the batteries are, are still okay 
Uh, obviously, if they were low, you could put that there. Uh, and you could put whatever else you wanted to here. Uh, if you're trying to get together with some of your ham buddies, you might put that you're listening on uh, 7280. Hmm. You know, okay. so it, it's a way that you can use uh, Winlink just to do something that, that's a bit different but it's not just about posting your position. You can also give some information there. Now to show you where that was in uh, Pat menu. So here we are on position reports. You would simply click post your position and then put your comment right here. Once you hit, once you've done this and you hit continue, it would put it in the outbox, just like it did the weather request uh, a mm -hmm. second ago. Okay. Is that um, I did have a question here from Dennis. How well does Pat Winlink work with Winlink Forms? Is this the forms you're showing us, or is this that something else? No, that is something else. I don't mess with forms uh, very much, but I know that uh, forms is built into uh, Pat Menu, or I'm sorry, Pat Winlink now. Uh, let's see if I can give a quick glimpse of that. So we go to action, uh, let's see, I think it's compose. Yeah, and then a template here is what you would click. So here's the various forms that are available. And these are the same forms that's available in Winlink Express. So, but to say, do they work uh, exactly the same? I, I can't say one way or the other, because like I said, I just don't play with these enough um, to know. Uh, Jody says if Matt Damon would have had this in uh, in the movie Martian, he could have saved himself a whole lot of work with Pathfinder and Sojourner, which is, <laughs> which is a good, uh, it's an incredibly insightful uh, point there, Jody. Thank you for that. that uh, that's great. Actually, that would have made the movie a lot more popular amongst the ham radio community. So, yes, you know, there's this, always that. This is true. <laughs> so I'm just going to run another quick Telnet connection. All right. And there's the weather forecast coming back in that I requested a minute ago. Okay. So if you click on it, uh, it tells you that this is the forecast for four miles uh, south southeast of Walter Hill, Tennessee, which uh, is just about exactly where I'm standing at this particular moment. But you can see that it gives you a weather forecast for the next uh, several days. So that again, is, that just, is pretty cool. Yeah, just I mean, this is information you can get when there is no cell phone, when there is no internet. Um, you know, you don't get a radar image, but you can at least get an idea of what the weather uh, is going to be. Yeah. No, that's no, that's good. I mean, you know, if you could figure out what the projected temperatures are and rain and whatnot. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to uh, bring up here is if guys are still using Winlink Express, there is a catalog feature inside of Winlink Express and they can get some of this information. I know position reports, weather reports, uh, there are some things, there are some things in Winlink Express uh, but I don't know if you'll get everything you see inside of Pat, uh, inside of Pat menu. Where is it pulling that weather info from? Ed wants to know if it's coming from the NOAA site. Uh, look, give me one second and I will tell you, uh, forecast.weather.gov. Okay. So weather.gov basically. Okay. Now a brand new feature, and you're not going to see this if you're running Pat menu. Uh, is something that I'm working on. I skipped over these two. These are propagation reports, so mm -hmm. very similar to weather reports. You can request those. Uh, I believe there's two different ones in there, a three-day propagation report and a WWV uh, report. So again, just like you, uh, you requested the weather, you can get a propagation report. Mm -hmm. And then under news, you've got uh, a few different options here. Uh, if you wanted to keep up with the news while you were off grid, mm -hmm. you have to remember Pat, or, or I'm sorry, Winlink was kind of initially geared towards sailors. 
uh, guys that were out over the ocean, miles and miles away from uh, any landmass, this gave them a way to keep up with different things. So a lot mm. of what you see uh, is kind of still carried over from those early days. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And then the last one in here that's interesting, and this is a new one that I'm working on, uh, is the ability to send a text message from WinLink. So send a text message to somebody's cell phone. If they reply to you, it comes right back into your inbox when you make your ne next connection. Now, it's, you know, it's not going to be obviously as instantaneous mm -hmm. as a true text message, but you can get information out. And this is uh, one of the things that I used after the national bombing to connect with friends and family uh, back in 2020 when we lost, uh, when the AT&T bomb, our AT&T building was bombed in downtown Nashville. I had no mm. internet. I had no cell phone. So some of these items in here is what I used to stay in touch with people. That's great. Not everybody's a ham radio operator and you still may want to reach out to them. Sure. So in this one, and, and if people don't know uh, from the early days of text messaging, every cell phone carrier had an email address that you could reach using someone's 10 digit phone number and uh, the, the email address for the remainder. Of it. So for instance, uh, Verizon was a 10 digit phone number at vtex.com. And you could send that out with any email and it would show up on your phone. One of the, right. and, and, and that stuff still works today, even though that's, you know, old, old technology at this point, the problem is, is remembering what that uh, email address is. So mm -hmm. I can remember the, the Verizon one, but I can never remember the one for AT&T mm. uh, or a lot of the others. So what I'm working on right now, and this will be coming in a uh, upcoming version of uh, Pat Menu, I'm hoping to get this out to my patrons in the next uh, probably week to 10 days, but you'll simply type in the phone number here and then you'll get a nice drop down uh, menu, and then you can just choose the carrier. That way you don't have to remember um, what that address is. So just for a quick demo here, I'm going to choose Verizon. Frank, what's your phone number? It is 555-246-55555. You actually got me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, there's a, obviously a fictitious phone number, Verizon yeah. and message for Frank. So if we just click post, it'll tell you again that it's posted to the, uh, to the outbox. So if we go over and we look at that in the outbox, you can see that it's already filled in that at vtext.com. Nice. So it'll auto fill in for the other carriers as well then? Yes. Okay. And then one other feature that, oh, you know what? I know what happened. Uh, that feature is not fully developed. So it exits out. It exits out of uh, Pat menu after you send the message and it should return you to the main menu. Don Izzo had a good smoke signals RF had a good idea. We need to get Kyle's phone number and put the messages. Please copy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great idea. Uh, All right. So I'll put please copy in the message here. Yeah. Now, that's right. Here's, here's another feature that I'm, I'm trying to work out. I think I've got this right. Uh, but I've got quite a bit more testing on it. Let's say you didn't know who's who Frank's cell provider was. Ah, uh, yes. Well, if you choose unknown right here and you click post the message in the outbox, you'll see that it addresses it to every single one of the known carriers in your list. <laughs> nice. So I, you're I, gonna get you're gonna get a lot of bounces. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the message should go through. I was figuring you were trying to do some fancy back end lookup of trying to figure out who the provider was, but hey, you no know what? Nope. We're just gonna no, spam, it. spam no, it. No, you've got to you've got to remember. Well, the, the worst thing that's gonna happen again. I got to test this, but the worst thing that should happen is we get a bounced email. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. I, I, right. Like I said, I, I got to test this, but there's mm-hmm. if you got to remember everything I write, I write as if you are going to have no internet connection at all. Right. So with that, I can't, you know, because of that, I can't do some sort of lookup on the back end. Not unless I downloaded a some sort of database, I guess, but who knows how many gigs of data that would be. Right. Yeah. No, that's doing it that way is much more i mean that's that's a good idea there might be a lookup service or something i don't know i i was yeah. just gonna be blown away by oh, however you did that but i like mm-hmm. i like how you did it to suit everyone well sometimes you got to be a little bit creative um mm-hmm. when you're limited to offline mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that is um that's a bit of a look at uh pat catalog inside of pat menu uh mm-hmm. there's some other features just some things that i felt were missing in pat menu like the ability to um select everything and archive it in your inbox so i wrote this into it so if you just say archive all email it'll take all the email out of your inbox to move it over to your archive folder uh nice. if you want to delete it you can delete it uh it, it was just one of those little quirky things that pat menu didn't have and the the developers may write it in there at some point in the future, but I'm not, you know, I'm not on the development team for the main application. I only write Pat Menu. Mm-hmm. So okay. I don't know if they'll put that in there, if there's plans, if it is, I don't know how long it'll take them. Um, but other things that we can do, um, different settings uh, for your radio. Uh, so you can turn rig control on and off. Um, I was trying to think, oh, uh, set your pat port, a few other things that uh, so that when you click the button to say start the modem, it knows whether you want rig control or not. Okay. So just a few, uh, and then you can put in different config files. So with this new system that I'm running, I actually use this one Raspberry Pi with every radio I could possibly take into the field. So with that, what I what I've done is I've created a config file for the, all the different radios. So there's okay. the 891, the 705, the 857. If I'm using the MobiLink with a TNC or uh, the MobiLink TNC with an HT, I can select this. Um, it was just a way for me to simplify instead of trying to keep up with a different pie for every single radio. Um, I wanted the ability just to use one pie for all of my radios. So this gives you the ability, once you've configured it for that radio, uh, you can just click and load that particular config file. Talking about configuration, uh, Richard Kilo Oscar for Oscar Bravo Romeo is asking, uh, he's looking at the PAT configuration and it's asking for a specific IP address. Can you put something more dynamic there? Um, no, I, I'm trying to figure. Okay, he's got to be in, and I can't open my config file, um, not without exposing my password. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use, it. it's probably already preloaded with 127.0.0.1 colon and some port number. Mm-hmm. You should be able to replace that with 0.0.0.0. Uh, that would give you the advantage of being able to connect not only from a local computer, but from a network computer direct to the PAT inbox. Okay. Interesting. What would be more dynamic? Uh, the computer name. or But if it's, if, if it's accepting... And like a DNS name? Yeah, DNS. Is it the server or client question? That that was a question. Is the server or client you're given the specific IP address? Because if it's a server, like you said, zero dot zero dot zero dot zero will accept a connection from anything. Right, and it, that is the server. Uh, okay. The pat the pat server, and I believe once you do that, you can use the host name of the pi dot local colon whatever the port number is, and get to uh, the pat the pat mailbox from across the network that that would be that dynamic way of doing it on the um 
uh, on the client side. And uh, I think Mike is opening up an auction for the Smoking Apes number, and the current going bid is ten dollars. <laughs> I didn't see whose number they were talking about. I saw them talking about somebody's phone number in there, but it was all right. Smoking Ape. Uh, Smoking Ape. Okay. Clarence. All right. Clarence, yeah. His name is Clarence. All right. Good. So that's kind of a, uh, well, relatively quick overview of Pat Menu and some of the things that you can do uh, with, with Pat Winlink. Okay. That's pretty cool. Good. Okay. Now, um... We were talking yesterday on the phone, Jason, and um, you were talking about, um, were you talking about setting up WinLink the first time and sending that email, or there was something yeah. you were going to ask me to do with the 705, and you said, oh, we'll do that on the stream, and then I well, was going to talk to you about it, and we got we got all distracted with my Raspberry Pi issues. Yeah, so the, that's two different things I think you're referring to, and that was okay. uh, showing you how to set up the 705's GPS Right. Um, uh, uh, live on the stream and then covering if you don't have a WinLink account. Uh, okay. If you don't okay. have a WinLink account, you can download either RMA or not. When your internet uh, is your internet is starting to c kind of fade there. Uh, Pat WinLink. All right. Say that whole say the whole line again. You can download something. Your internet kind of blipped there for a second. All right. It's still blipping. <laughs> hey, while that comes up, you got anything to uh, highlight in the chat? Uh, I had... Uh... No, I don't. Cool. Jason, you yeah. look like you're back here. Is that better? Yeah, I think that's yeah. a little... Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, so if you don't have a WinLink account... Mm -hmm. You can either uh, install WinLink Express or you can install Pat WinLink. Uh, when it asks for, if it asks you for a password, you can put whatever you want to in there. Uh, send a email to anybody, doesn't matter who it's sending to, mm -hmm. uh, and, and use a Telnet connection. Once you connect, you it may do it immediately and you may have to make a second Telnet connection, but the system will automatically recognize that you don't have an account and it will send you an automated uh, email response with a temporary password that you that you can then plug in uh, to either Pat or WinLink Express. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you were on uh, Pat WinLink, you could come right here to Manage Pat WinLink, and then click Log In, Log Out, and that's where you mm -hmm. put your uh, your credentials. Okay. I uh, while you guys were tinkering around with that and talking, I uh, I took my SD card out of the old Pi and put it in this new one I had in the box, and it's working better, although it's still kind of a little bit slow. But I've got Firefox up now, so I can, um, and it's logged into the Pat mailbox. So if I were to go, because I don't know, you said it was you said it was telling telling the, you that I had the wrong uh, password and that yeah, I had so, an active account? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. and that's another thing about WinLink that a lot of people don't know. If mm -hmm. You don't... It's going to be think one I'll, of those days, Jason. I know it. Yeah, I think we lost you again. If you want to... I don't know if you, if you stop sharing your screen. I don't know if that would help any or not. Yep, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah. Is that better? So, yeah, for the moment, yeah. For, for the moment, that's great. Okay, all right. The only thing we won't show is setting up the GPS, and uh, they can jump over to the forum if they want to know more about that. Okay. Uh, the build a, build a pie forum, we can walk them through it pretty easy. Okay. Um, if you don't use your WinLink account for a span of 400 days, they will purge mm -hmm. you from the system. Uh, really? meaning you have to go back and reset up your account again. It's pretty quick and easy to set it up. But you... hmm. <laughs> he keeps... do, 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 do. Look thinking... at the intensity in Jason's know, yeah, face the, right now. I know, it, yeah. I'm guessing that he has sudden link the way that Mike does, but I'm yeah. not sure. We were able to push through it. 
uh, yeah. for some reason with Mike. And he usually it, he's been on the stream before, and he usually has a pretty good connection. So I think something else is going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, I did have a question from Kyle. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Where's the Node Red editor in the Build a Pie script? Oh, I wonder if he's got plans for that. <laughs> he might, you know, he might have plans for that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was about to ask the Jason who was locked up to see if he mm. had any comment on that. <laughs> Are you back? I'm back. I yeah, don't yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you're back. I usually, I've got fiber internet. I usually do not have this issue. That's what I was just saying. I was like, usually you've been on the stream before and you've been pretty solid. So I don't know what the deal is that... I've got fiber over here too. I mean, I guess it could be on my end, but I haven't I haven't seen Frank blip once yet. So mm -hmm. no, I'm pretty sure it's on my end because I'm I'm okay. having I'm, I'm seeing other weird things going on. So oh okay okay maybe I All should right. have rebooted the uh, the computer before the live stream. <laughs> maybe so. That's that's Jason's solution. I, yeah. I I just leave my computer on. I don't want to touch it. It's all working. Mine yeah. stays on all the time, twenty four seven. Oh, I oh, mine does too. Mm -hmm. Mine does mm -hmm. too. So. Unless I, well, I, I shut it off when I go out of town. <laughs> when I don't even shut mine. I, do. I don't even shut mine off. Then I might want to remote into it. Yeah. I need well, to I have fix a computer that. upstairs. I do that. Yeah. I need to fix that. I had that question highlighted. Um, go ahead. Okay. Tell, read it. Uh, I don't think Pat. Pat is not your program, is it? Somebody's no. asking why did you call it Pat, but you didn't name it. It's not you. Yeah. You built the menu, but you didn't build the Winlink program. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, and that's yeah. what I was saying earlier. Is I'm not on the Pat development team. I only wrote Pat menu, and right. I have no idea why they called it Pat. <laughs> no clue. S Scott says that they called it Pat because Bob was taken. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, so. could be. Do, do we want to give Bob more? More credit uh, there. You know what? There's too many Bobs in ham radio. Like, there's too many Mikes and Steves. <laughs> so, depends on which Bob you're talking about, I guess. But, uh, oh yeah. man, look oh, at that. Yeah. You're going invisible there. So, so Jason wants to give away one of his, uh, Infed half wave antennas tonight. What? Yeah. We built that. That was a fun build. Yeah, it was. Did you watch that, yeah. Jason? He was on. He came on and helped us with it. Remember oh, that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just, I said something to him right before, and he's like, let me know if you need help. And I'm like, yeah, why don't you join? Because <laughs> so, I don't know what the heck I'm doing half the time, and I got Frank with me, and that, which is more of a handicap. So oh, I, I, I'm just, just a step behind, but my soldering yeah. job is much better than yours. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think your soldering is oh, better than mine. It. Yeah, I can spell solder better than you can, but you, you, you actually do solder better than mm -hmm. I do. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have a, a question for you, Jason, here. Um, okay. Wait, I'm, which Jason? I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to call you Antenna Jason. <laughs> so I'm getting confused. We got Jason number two and now Antenna All right. Jason. All right. um, Kyle's asking, uh, where's the node red editor in the build a pie script? Uh, there is no node red editor, but you mm. are more than welcome to take build a pie and add anything you want to on top of it. Hmm. Okay. Well then, Kyle, go forth and conquer. Do it. That's yeah, right. there's, <laughs> there's a there's a lot of people that want different things, uh, and I'm not going to try to pack everything into Build a Pie uh, because the more I add into it, the more development time it takes, the more time it takes to support it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've already created a monster, uh, and it is yes. almost a full time job maintaining some of this stuff at times. Um, so it, it's a good base. And then if you, you know, it, it, maybe you're into SDRs or, uh, node red or, you know, whatever it happens to be, you're welcome to add on top of Build a Pie. Hmm. Okay. Good, good info, I think. Okay. Any other questions, uh, Frank? Um, no, the current bid for, um, apes number right now is $10, $10. Hmm. At Mike, uh, K-A-M-R-D, if you want to try to top that. I mm -hmm. don't think I saw a sold yet, though. Going ah, once. Okay. So how do we want to pick someone? Because I don't have the StreamYard number generator. Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. OBS, OBS doesn't doesn't have that oh. option. So, so we're going to have to... You you got to figure that out. I'm I'm sponsoring yeah. the giveaway. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's... Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can find something here real quick. Will a comment picker work on a live stream? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Do you have one? 
there's a couple that you can just Google YouTube comment picker, but I have no idea if it would work or not. And then I think you have to give it the link Let's to the video. Out. So yeah, I was going to see if YouTube random comment picker for giveaways. Enter the YouTube URL. Uh, let's see. Let me read through this real quick. Easiest way to pick a random winner for all the comments on YouTube when you finish. Ranting raving, eighteen dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> yeah, that might. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. A that, lot of people that, pick uh, me. Pick me. Right. <laughs> <coughs> that nope that won't work it says comments are disabled so that must not work on a live stream oh get YouTube comments feels like we should have really been yeah. prepared for this well he did he told me yeah we weren't I wouldn't literally two minutes before we went live right <laughs> perfect yep. i love right. it we were we were not planning to do this so uh yeah we were not planning to do this but yeah i gotta i gotta figure out some way to do that in the comments and just say um because i've done that before because all of my giveaways are done with signups prior to the fact so people go to a certain web link and they sign up and then i download that list and on the not of the live stream and pick it and do it like that. I've never done real time uh, winners like that before because I don't use Streamyard. So because Streamyard doesn't look, it, it doesn't have as many features as OBS does. So it's a lot more limited, but it does have some cool plugins where that that and that's one of them. John's asking, um, is the pet menu more um, RP, RPI centric with no platform supports? Uh, yes, it is RPI centric. Uh, it was specifically RPI? written. It was specifically written for the Raspberry Pi. Um, on other flavors of Linux, Debian based, it might work. I've never hmm. tried it, but uh, I have a new project coming up that I will be trying that on. Nice, very cool. Very Just because cool. Raspberry Pis are so stinking hard to get your hands on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dude, although, right mm -hmm. although, yeah, you got some yesterday, didn't you? Micro Center in Atlanta. It was pure dumb luck. <laughs> I, I walked nice. in there mm -hmm. and uh, was just browsing around, and they had them um, in a cage, locked mm. up. And Limit. they were they were normal price, weren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. That's a four gig. Model, uh, Pi 4, 4 gig, 55 bucks. See, you can technically buy those on Amazon right now, but they're like 170 bucks. Right. I mean, they it, show they show in stock, but they're like one hundred and sixty eight ninety nine or something ridiculous like that. And I'm like, well, it's people guess... going out to places like Micro Center, buying them up and then turn around reselling them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh -huh. for scalpers prices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yep. but no, I found those. It was limit one per person, but I had my wife with me. <laughs> the first raspberry, nice. so, it's the first raspberry pie she's ever purchased. She's ever bought. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Hey, man, I tell you what, why don't we add your antenna to my giveaway I'm going to do next week? Okay. And and uh, and I will add it on uh, to because we're going to give away GMRS radios next week. I've had a sign up list on that. Frank, you could share that link again. There's yes, a lot more people. There's a lot more people watching now than there was when we started, which is good. Um, so. So yeah. So next week when we have uh, Mark from the Huntsville Ham Fest on and we draw winners for the GMRS radios that we're going to be giving away. We will add a KM4 ACK and Fed half wave antenna to that mix. An antenna kit, I should say. It's a kit. You have to yes. build it. Um, but there's I built one and it works, so anybody can do it. It's not hard. Yeah, there's um, a couple of videos out there on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, there's a few. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll add that into the mix for next week. I uh, forgot who said giveaway. it. Um, Pat stands for, was named after the Postman Pat. <gasps> I didn't know if that was uh, a joke or whatnot. Yeah, so. I just read it. Yeah. Smash. You know, it seems like it seems like I've heard that before. Yeah. 
Yeah, it might be. It might be. I, I hid that uh, I hid that user from the channel as well. So, okay. Well, hey, this is um uh I got some things to work on on my side, but I want to take this out to this to the field and actually do do some field work with so Winlink off off the you know go out to the deer lease or go out to a park or something with no and not I mean I'll technically I'll have internet but I'll just disconnect everything and do some Winlink uh, messages and kind of see how it works. Right now. I guess I got to get my uh, uh, I guess I got to get my password figured out though. Yes. So hey, Huntsville you... will be Huntsville will be a good test sport. You remember how bad cell service was? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Up yeah. at the state park. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, I love going anywhere that has no cell service. That means I'm True. in the best part of my vacation. Yeah. How many hours did it take you to upload that video? <laughs> I don't even remember. I don't. But I'm bringing my Starlink this year, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll you see how well clear, you got to have a clear shot of the sky though, don't you? Yeah, to um yeah, I behind our uh let's see. Behind the the RV spot where we were, there was a big transformer uh which didn't help with the RFI, but then behind that it was kind of like a clear opening that looked towards the sky. So, um I think that I can probably I think I can probably find a spot for it. And then I've got that gigaparts mass that it goes up on. I can put it up like 25 or so feet. So that'll be beneficial as well. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I may have to go down to the mountain. I go down to get to, to the gigaparts store and upload my videos from there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Great, uh, great presentation, man. I appreciate you being on the show tonight. Yes, sir. Anytime. Oh, yeah. and when you pick that winner, uh, shoot me the mailing address and I'll just mail it from here. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's perfect. That's that's a great way to do it. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Any other questions that you've seen, Frank? No, not okay. not at the immediate moment. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Good deal. Okay. Well, uh, once again, thanks to everyone for being here. Um, go to I put the build a pie uh github url in the description of this video so you can go out and download uh well there's a link on it to download the pie imager application you can image the pie or put a new image on a micro sd card like this put it into a pie boot it up and then just run that one script and it gives you a list of all these items we have done that on stream before so i've had jason on this live stream year year or two ago something like that and we went through that whole process. So go back and find that on my channel. And, of course, it's been updated. There's a lot of new stuff in, that was added in it. That was right before you put hammers on it. I remember that. It was right before um, hammers was added to your to your script as an option to, to click on. Okay. Uh, so so it's probably, what, a year, year or so ago that we at did that? Least I don't remember. A, at least a year. Yeah. If, I was if thinking closer. To, yeah, I was thinking closer to two years, but I don't remember. Yeah, it might be. Um, There's but, three videos on that GitHub page. That even okay. if you know yes. nothing about it, you can watch those, and that kind of uh, takes you from the the very beginning all the way up to everything running and configured. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I watched uh, I watched that f no, not the first video because it was like explaining it wasn't what I was looking for. I watched the second video though, and it was like, okay, yeah, here's the list of all the stuff that was in there. But yeah, three good videos on there as well. So that's a good point. I think that first one even walks you through the imager and getting the uh, right. the SD card installed or the OS installed on the SD card and the, the whole nine yards on that first one. Yeah, it's like very much starting from scratch on that one. And I'm like, well, I already, I've already i imaged a lot of Raspberry Pi, so I'm, I'm good with that. But then when it got to the build a Pi, that's the part that I watched. So Another important question for you, Jason, antenna Jason, is coming <laughs> from Mtrack. When will the the antennas back in stock? When they we were back the... in, they were back in stock yesterday. Mm -hmm. So they're gone, or they're still there? They're gone. <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> I saw them come back. I think you posted a. Would you post something on Twitter about it or something? No, I don't know. No, somebody else posted on Twitter. So then that's what the, I saw. Go, go to th if you're interested in getting one of the kits. Go to the website, look over in the description, and there's a uh, link there where you can sign up for a list. When mm -hmm. new stock hits the store, 
there's an email uh, blast that goes out and make sure you get in within two or three hours. They're usually gone, hmm. but I try to have them. I try to have more stock every two weeks. That's, that's what, that's the goal. Sometimes it stretches out to three weeks, but we try to get them out every two weeks. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, good. Yeah. And it's, it's, if you guys are thinking about getting one, yeah, definitely go do that. Cause it's worth the, uh, it's worth the time to, to wait for it and grab it and duel it. It's, it's a really fun kit. So, okay. Well, I want to uh, say uh, thanks to everyone tonight and uh, pre uh, Jason, thank you once more. That was uh, good info. And um, one thing that, uh, that I've been, I've been wanting to do some WinLink stuff anyway and um, and I know you can do it on Windows, and I, I've got it installed in my Windows la my Windows surf my Surface laptop. Um, but I've been wanting to do the Raspberry Pi thing for a while and kind of get a little bit more familiar with it. So this was really good uh, information to kind of get started. And I've got I've got to go figure out what's going on with my account, and then I'll I'll be able to do a little bit more uh, with it on that. But I look forward to sending uh, sending my first email to you, and I'll say, hey, guess where I'm sending an email from? <laughs> Make it work that way. So. So uh, 73 to everybody tonight. Check the links in the description below because I'll put that in. Uh, the build a pie script's already in there, and I'll put a couple other things we talked about in there. Go sign up for the giveaway next weekend, uh, which will include one of Jason's kits. So uh, 73 uh, Jason, to what, what is your – I just saw this question. What is your website okay. for your antennas? KM4ACK.com. Okay. That'll take you there. I, I think I went to Square Site or whatever. But yeah, it's a redirect. But it's a redirect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for being here tonight. And uh, Frank, do you have a link yet for tomorrow night Monday Night Ham Radio? No. Okay. That's fine. I've just been busy trying to get stuff together. No problem. <laughs> over here. No problem. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll see you guys tomorrow night on Monday Night Ham Radio for uh, for those of you that watch that. And um, thanks for joining tonight. And everyone have a good evening. Seven three. Seven three. Seven, three.